Oh. oh. Also, uh, I told them when we were waiting for you to pick earlier, I said that you were, you had just, you're a Venezuelan girl who just came to Canada three years ago. Mm -hmm. Give you, give you a break. <laughs> oh, thanks, bud. You're yeah. always there for me. I try. Maybe. But it was like, does me taking a little extra time affect who you're going to pick next? Like, are you sitting with the, your dick in one hand and the other hand red poised above the draft room? No, they're just like, we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait. I'm just like, I'm sorry that people have lives during the day. Yeah, I mean, if you don't want to wait, don't make the... Don't sit in the draft don't lobby hours. all day. Well, hey, don't make the window three hours. Well, and also, if you don't... Yeah, make the draft closer to... Like, what are you going to do when we're all drafted? Yeah, everyone's yeah, you're going to wait, like, three months. Everyone's going to forget about the league. It's dumb. Did I, you I mention there's everything. zeros of dollars on the line? Yeah, and that's the thing. There's no money on the line for this thing. It's just a headache. So that makes it even worse. They can go it's, suck a dick. Yeah. It's been nothing but a headache. It's like to this thing. They have to masturbate. That's the only explanation. So, uh, Mark, uh, I am third in our lawyer pool still. Has he sent an update? No, I just, uh, we didn't point it out last week. Okay. Of 150 people, I'm in third place. And Mark, also what are you? 15 points out of uh, the money. Um, I know. Uh, I want to say 12th or 15th. But and it's this... probably within six, because I predicted yeah. from the start. So I'll get like huge bonus points for that as well. What, Chicago? So did I. No, like, from the start. Oh, yeah, yeah, I guess you did, too. Yeah, I had Chicago, and I had Corey Crawford as the winning. I picked pretty much from the beginning every Chicago player I could think of. Although, we'll talk about in the sports uh, on the podcast about who actually has the most points in the series so far. Like We are on the podcast. Are we? Yeah. Are we this is the podcast right now. All right. That's it, baby. So, in our lower pool, one of the uh, questions was, who do you think will score the most points in the finals? So, as of yesterday, I, I did a tell them, like, okay, so I wonder who it is, really. Anyone want to take a shot? Tyler Johnson. No. There's four guys tied with four points in the series. Andrew Shaw. No. Ben Bishop. No. <laughs> okay. I'm out. Anyone Harry else? Irving. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kuchi, Kuchi Kucherov. Oh, Kucherov. Kuch no. Kuchi Kucherov? Kuchi, uh, whatever, whatever the fuck his name is. Kuchi Kuchi Koo. Well, two yeah. He's in two Blackhawks. Uh, the Blackhawks are Marion Hosa. Oh, made Marion. And Tara Vinen. Really? Yeah. Both have oh. points. And for the Lightning, with four points each, Hedman and Ryan Callahan. I think I picked Ryan Callahan. He's had the most points in the series? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting confused. I'm in two. Shut up, Tyler. <laughs> I'm in two playoff pools. Make your brim straighter. <laughs> Should I take Franz Nielsen? I'm in two two playoff pools. I think we've talked about it. And one's a player pool, and one one's our lawyer pool. And I I'm pretty sure I hedged, but I get confused as to what I picked and what, because I'm pretty much all Tampa in one pool, and then all Chicago in another. Ah, okay. So you're win win regardless. I hope so. I promised the guy I co manage with stakes, and I really don't want to have to pay out of pocket. <laughs> that was like the one time where. Uh... I had a pools card and came down to the Monday night game. So I invited a bunch of my friends out to uh, Jack Astor's. And I said, if Atlanta beats, I believe it was the Saints at the time, then I would have a perfect pools card and dinner's on me. So Atlanta wins the game. I'm freaking out. Perfect pools card. I'm thinking I've just, you know, hit it big. So I pay the dinner bill, which is about $150. Go to cash on my ticket. Yeah, it was 300 bucks. Nice. Oh, well, you came out a little bit on top. <laughs> See, this is how you get into sports, friends. People that are listening that aren't super into sports but are listening to us because we're super funny, start gambling on it. Mm -hmm. It feels better. Especially it does feel better. <laughs> well, it gives me a reason to be, like, I'm not a huge fan of Tampa or Chicago. Like, I think I, I've said before, if I wasn't cheering for the Bruins, I'd cheer for Chicago. But it's like, it gives me a reason to care mm -hmm. about sports. Now, what I need to do is start gambling on basketball. <laughs> How so? Because I don't really care. Oh. oh. Yeah. But by gambling on it will force me to care. This is true. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Speaking of I, chair off, he is um, announced as he'll be in, being in the lineup tonight. Oh. Oh, yeah. I just got that alert, too. I turned on Channel 6 when I, uh, for our American listeners, that's CBC. Channel Who are playing the hockey game. What are you? Um, cable? I do have cable. Cable? 
future of like <laughs> like you you still plug in the coax into the back of your TV and not go through a digital box. You've seen her TV. It's a Fuck. no. I have a digital box. Fucking channel six. She's, She's got a box, guys. <laughs> I wouldn't know though. He means my vagina. Oh right. Um, I do have a cable. I just got Netflix though, so I'm I'm debating my cable future. And now the Game of Thrones is over. You don't need HBO anymore. Oh yeah, I'm canceling that tomorrow. I'm phoning <laughs> Rogers and canceling it tomorrow. <laughs> I just it's, it's, for a couple months. Well, no, before Game of Thrones, I called and haggled my cable with Rogers and got it down by like whatever HBO is to add it. Nice. <laughs> and then added HBO, and then I'm just gonna call him now and cancel that. Nice. Nice. I do not need you anymore, HBO. And then, but I don't know. I got Netflix, and my viewing habits are changing. Because clearly I'm never home. In sports, I can buy, like, the specific sports packages, right? And not watch anything. And not watch anything. That's correct. You can't watch anything in Canada. It's bullshit. I can do hockey. Well, that's the thing is I'm a Bruins fan, so I don't... Yeah. Like, I was able to watch all of my games. Yeah, except for when they play the Leafs. So you, both, you could be okay with those. I could be. I'll go to a bar for those and wear all my gear. And If, uh, if you want to watch a, a baseball game, a, a Toronto Blue Jays game... Uh, you can't, because Canada is their region. All of Canada. All of Canada. Well, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I Because I, I, I looked into this. That's why I know so much about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, and if you want to watch any kind of NFL, uh, you can't watch Thursday night, Sunday night, Monday night, playoffs, or the Super Bowl. P- what? Yeah. So what do you watch? Uh, Nothing. The Sunday during the day games. Oh boy! Hope everyone's a big Jacksonville fan. Right? Yay! I love Jacksonville. It's, and it's all like as long as it's not televised in your area, basically. Oh, that's shitty. Yeah. Well, even even if you guys have a blocking service, you'd have to pick the right area to, you know, you like you'd have to hide your IP to a specific city to get the game, and you'd have to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's that takes work. too much effort. Yeah, so I just pay for cable. Yeah, me too. And Netflix. And Netflix. Mm. And and uh, VPN service. <laughs> <laughs> just flushing it down. And how much TV do you actually watch? Oh, too much. Okay, well then that justifies it. I I crushed three seasons of uh, Arrow yeah. and uh, and a season of The Flash in the last month. Hmm. That's all I have to say. <laughs> mm. Oh boy! I've determined to start watching uh, Daredevil, but I think that's oh, different. Yeah. I've watched Daredevil too. I said that for like four weeks, though. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Or however long I've had Netflix. Um, so who wouldn't want to watch the Blue Jays? Right now, I think everybody wants to watch the Head to Her. For everyone wants to watch the Blue Jays. They are currently winning. They are. I we started the podcast after one of the umpires got hit in the head and left the game. Oh, that's not bad. Well, I was about the the Batista home run. Yeah, I, I think they're still winning. Like I think they started again. I think he just got an ouchie. Just yeah, it's a little one nothing. Just a little ouchie. Just a little ouchie. Just a little but yeah, is this is this gonna be anything or is this just what they did two years ago and we're like, hey, we're gonna win ten games and then lose? What do you mean 14? two years ago? They do this every year. Not two years ago. Was it? What was their their ten game streak? Was like two years ago, right? It was eleven. Yeah, years. last year they had the. Didn't yeah. they hit the record or tie the record or something? I think that was the year before. No, it was, yeah, it was two years ago. Yeah. It was 2013. Yeah. They did it. Yeah, two years ago. Yeah, and they would do one ten games in a row, and then we're like, just kidding, and then lost fourteen. Yep. <laughs> well, into so like played a part hmm? too. Yeah. Well, that's the Blue Jays story of forever. How long have I been saying we should murder George Pulis? <laughs> uh, three weeks. Let's make this the fourth podcast in a row then. Yeah. I will keep... Oh, someone scored. I heard a honk. I will keep uh, calling for his demise uh, as, as, as many episodes as the Blue Jays win streak is. Okay. All right. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I don't know. Like, eventually they have to lose a game, right? Yeah. So how many games in a row are they going to lose after this? Two. Yeah, I was going to say two. And then will it be another little win streak, or is it going to be two losses, one win? I was going to say five. Okay. Five-game winning streak. There you go. And then they'll lose it one game. So they're going to be good, is what you're saying? Yes. Yes, they'll be... Uh, they're 
They're going to continue to be four. good. Uh, ten games, six and four. Was, what are you seeing from them that you're liking that you didn't see it back in our pessimistic April? And if Tyler had time the, or, the, or cared, he could splice in old episodes where we insulted them. Yeah. Oh, the bats have been ouchies. That was to the Blue Jays, not to Tyler. <laughs> Double whammy. Oh, snap. And the bullpen has actually not imploded yet. No, not yet. Yeah. But are they going to? Like, are we just waiting for the inevitable implosion? Uh, I would imagine because they're still exploring... Um, options at the closing position because yeah. they were thinking about Papelbon. They realized- Thank God it wasn't Papelbon. <laughs> That's a he just sucks. Actually, that kind of segues into uh, the email we got. Oh Jesus! Yeah, we got an email. Yeah, yeah we got an email. Was it from my dad? No, no. It's from my friend Ben, and uh, it's epically long. Yeah, I was talking to him over the weekend because uh, we had a little get together for his birthday, and he uh, called into the. Blue Jays talk with Mike Wilner and threw this idea and then, uh, well, I'll read the entire email. It's epic. That's cool. We got some time to kill. I did no research for this podcast, so please kill as much time as humanly possible. Ah, Blue Jays thought. Okay, so this is my friend. So, I called the Blue Jays fan talk program hosted by Mike Wilner and Fan590 the other night after a Jays game. I gently suggested moving R.A. Dickey to the closing position. Mike Wilner thought this was a bad idea. I'll add his tone was suggested it was the worst idea he's ever heard in his life. I realize the Jays are on the up, and as I write this, they are currently holding an 11-game winning streak, but I suggested the move for a good reason. The Jays are in the toughest division in the AL, more importantly, as a starting pitcher, Dickey is struggling with a 2-6 record and a 5.29 ERA. Here is my thinking. The primary objective of any pitcher is to throw off the timing of the batter. Dickey throws the knuckleball pitch anywhere from 60 to 80 miles per hour, and the pitch is regarded as highly unpredictable. Similarly, Dickey earns the same reputation. So, my thought was, if his... If the high-speed pitchers are pitching eight innings of 90 to 97 miles per hour heat, including good relief doing the same, bring in Dickey to finish off with a knuckleball can only throw off the timing of the batters. Historically, while there haven't been any official closing knuckleball pitchers, from the research I've done, one name to point is Hoyt Wilhelm, who had a full 20-year knuckleball career in the Major League's career with 227 saves and a 2.5 ERA. Below him are Eddie Fisher, 81, with a 3.41 ERA, and Charlie Hoff at 61 and 3.75 ERA. So, my argument was out of the box and unconventional, which I knew was going into the conversation. So, I wasn't surprised at Wilner's reaction. I admit I was nervous and blanked out on bigger parts of my argument, but after thinking about it in retrospect, I have concluded two points. First, many people do not trust knuckleball, and this is a problem. It is clear Mike Wilner is not a fan of the knuckleball pitch, which, in my opinion, is why he's so against the suggestion. I get it, the knuckleball pitch is unpredictable, but let me point out it's a two way street. For the pitcher, it's a hard pitch to control. For batters, it's equally hard to hit if tossed well. Wilner tossed out a specific scenario involving the Jays up one run in the bottom of the ninth and putting Dickey into close the game is not a good situation. While the pitch is unpredictable, I agreed fully, sending someone like Brett Cecil out to close is just as unpredictable and could result and has resulted in a loss as well. Personally, I develop empathy for Dickey and I wonder who trusts him with this pitch. Someone must or they are paying Dickey a whole heck of a lot of money not to not trust him. Second, the end is money. The point is, more philo- philosophically, than anything, for most Major League Baseball teams, possibly all, definitely the Jays, money profit is the end goal. Players play to meet the expectations of the owners and upper management so that revenue and profit can be reaped. Now let's stop and collect ourselves and consider the fact that at the end of the day, this is a game we are talking about here. It's entertainment. The end for any game is to win. Winning is the end and money is the means to get there. It's a shame these organizations get so backwards. I know most people, mostly fans, and I'm guessing maybe Jays management, would say the Jays are all about winning, but let's face it. There's too much money involved to not worry about how much money is being lost for... I lost that. Wasted. There it is. <laughs> if the game is about winning and the Jays were truly to go with this philosophy that they would hit to win and pitch to win, for example, hitting to win means some, sometimes avoiding the scouting report. I admit there's good reason to look at matchups. I'm not against it, but sometimes a pitcher or hitter is hot, and maybe it's a good idea to just leave them in. On a sidebar, this is something else I don't understand. If a batter doesn't hit well against a certain pitcher, for whatever reason... Shouldn't there be more effort made to improve the batter rather than let them continue their career thinking they will never be successful in that situation? We would lose expectations on guys like Edwin and Batista turning on and hitting home runs and just expecting to get on base and win. Again, hit to win. As for pitching to win, let me bring you back to my suggestion regarding Dickey. If you are pitching to win, then moving Dickey isn't such a risky move. As long as it results in a win, that is. But you know, but you won't know until you try. Perhaps a move like this gives Dickey a boost and improves his ability to pitch while also giving the Jays an edge in a tough division 
or pushes them to suck less than the other teams at the very least. Thanks for reading, and hopefully uh, makes for a good banter. I'd like to know I'm currently being Mark Bun or Mel- Fantasy Baseball Keeper Pool. Take that, Bun. Ben. <laughs> wow. Bastard. It's, a, it's an interesting argument. I, he had me, and then he didn't have me, and then he had me, and then he doesn't have me anymore. <laughs> and I just, if you guys want to start, I'm just looking up one statistic. Well, I, I was looking up here that the uh, the Jays have not made a postseason anytime they do have an 11 game win streak. Well, they've only done it what twice? Three, three times. Three times? Once, okay. once way back in the day. So yeah. But if they have a 12 game winning streak, this is true. It's a it's a new uh, it's a new <laughs> stat. <laughs> I just I think. Ari Dickey, I'll start. Like I think Ari Dickey lets too many people on base to be a closer. Because mm-hmm. he, he gives up home runs, and that's known. Yeah. Uh, and I don't, this is, I was, uh, this is what I was looking at the statistics on, and I couldn't find them specifically, but just I feel from the last couple starts that I've seen, when he gets hit, he gets hit in early innings. Mm-hmm. And so if he's going out there and and he's a he's a workhorse, he's a distance guy, you send him out there, he's going to allow three to four runs in the first one or two innings. Yeah. And then he always seems to settle down. Yeah. And he'll go. So I don't know what that would equate to in terms of closing, mm-hmm. but I just feel like he needs the length. But I, I have no statistics to back that up other than just seeing like – you know, the first couple of innings, he'll allow three or four runs, and then he'll kind of last throughout the rest of the game. And closing is a total different mindset as well, because you're going in thinking, I'm only going to pitch one inning. Whereas a starting pitcher, you're going in thinking, okay, I got to pitch at least six, maybe seven innings for a good start. So I'm going to, like, control myself. Whereas yeah. closers are just balls out, going, throwing as hard as you can, because it's only one inning that they're really in for. But in the past, there have been starting pitchers who have made the transition to closing. Um, John Smoltz comes to mind. Same with uh, actually Rivera, started as a starting pitcher and then went to the closing role and stayed there. Also, uh, oh God, what the fuck was his also started as a starting pitcher. He was in Boston before he went to Oakland and became a closer there. Who is that awful Blue Jay? Miguel. Oh, right. Batista? No. His last name was Batista because he's a tall guy. What the hell is his name? I think it is Miguel. Was it Miguel Batista? I think so. He was terrible. Was afterwards. And they made him a closer, and I'm yeah. like, what the hell? Hold on. Let me look this up. I mean, the, the, the big thing with Dickie, too, is just like when he's on, he's on, but then the hitting disappears yep. for whatever reason. And then when he's awful, it is yeah. just god awful. It's, it's like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. Who is this old guy? Well, he said before, and he said it pretentiously. He calls the knuckleball the pitch, right? And sometimes in post-game interviews, he's just like, the pitch wasn't working. Well, because that's that, all he's known for. Well, that's what I mean. And if that's happening, you know, one game out of every five, so that's you're sending in a closer that's for sure going to lose you. Like, I don't think Cecil's the answer either. No. But I, th- I think the era where we had a closer as a specific job is over. Like, I think it might be a moot point. Lot, not a lot of teams have, like, full-time Closer. closers. Like a closer. There hasn't, like, Papelbaum is kind of the last bit. Like, I know other teams have closers, like Houston yeah. Street and, um, oh, who's the guy that used to do this to the sky? You can't really see me. Fernando Rodney? Yeah, and I don't Still even think that. he's closing. I think oh, yeah. he's the setup guy. I think he's still closing. He was traded somewhere that already had a closer. But, like, you know, the days of the what's is not from the Yankees are over. Sure. Yeah. Well, you still have, like, guys like, uh, what's his face? I mean, leaders in saves right now, Perkins, Street, and Miller from the Yankees. So, I mean, that's 22, 19, and 17 saves. And Miller's so. gone here, I think, now. Pardon? Miller. Miller, Miller. Yeah, he's hurt now. Yeah. Uh, and then just, Rodney's at 14 there, so, I mean, he's still definitely closing. Oh, he's still closing. Like, I just, I think closing the way we used to think of it, you know, with the, in the Billy Koch era, future Hall of Famer Billy Koch, <laughs> like, I think that's over. I don't know, but maybe I'm just, maybe got, just because the Blue Jays haven't had anyone since uh, good old BJ. Like, they haven't had a closer closer. Well, we do have two Jays in the top 20 
for closer for saves. Uh, Cecil and Castro with a whopping four apiece. Ooh. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> or you could also have Aaron uh, Loop, who creates his own closing situations. <laughs> blowing a hole, I should say. So, like, I, I want to discuss Ben's email specifically. Like, would Dick, so not just let's ignore closers being a thing of the past, let's ignore, you know, like, would Ari Dickey make a good closer? Well, he's got to do anything other than what he's doing right now. So I, I'll, I'll backtrack. I've, I'm a little biased, I guess. Like, I love R.A. Dickey, and Gabe yeah, knows that. I'm with you because I told my buddy Ben that you're a huge Dickey fan, so he might, he might get some support that way. I, I support – I don't – okay. I'll say my history. Uh, so Gabe and I play trampoline dodgeball together. He's, I think he's getting his Dickey shirt Oops. and making a lot of noise doing it. Uh, so Gabe and I played trampoline dodgeball together for probably about a year and a half, and every single game we wore our R.A. Dickey jerseys. That was that he and I always matched. We had yeah, we had matching Blue Jay tall socks, and we wore our Dicky shirts, and we were the Dicky Bros. <laughs> and I like him. I don't think when he came two years ago from the Mets, he was the savior that everyone thought he was. Though speaking of which, the Jays are playing against Syndergaard and Darno tonight. Oh, that's exciting! <laughs> <laughs> wah wah. <laughs> If only it lined up with a Dickie start. Yeah. So when he came and when he won a Cy Young and he had those great years with the Mets, I like I'm such a huge proponent of like you don't get good at baseball later in life. Like you don't suddenly get amazing. If you have crazy stats like R.A. Dickey did, it could be a fluke. And if you look at R.A. Dickey's ERA history, yes. it kind of evens out. Yeah. And But I mean, but you can argue that was before he developed the knuckleball and whatever. He's always been a good pitcher, but those years with the Mets, he was a great pitcher. Yeah. And now I think he's just back to being a good pitcher. Also, the Mets City Field is a pitcher's park by design. We see you, Gabe. <laughs> oh. Gabe is still holding up the, the Dickey jersey. The center is not. No. Yeah. That's not and, the only, that's only Dickey I'm holding up. Hey, that's oh. disgusting. I went there. Is your girlfriend home? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's awkward. Sorry, my camera was kind of smudged. Um, so, like, I don't... When Dickie first came, people were saying how amazing he was, and then people were trying to, you know, bring him down. And now people are saying he isn't as good. So I just... I think there's a happy medium with R.A. Dickey, so that's my back history with him. I don't think he was the savior... Or to hearken to our other podcast, The Prince That Was Promised and The Hero in Game of Thrones. Uh, like, I, I don't think he was that guy, but I don't think he's as bad as people think he is now. I think he's going to end the season with, like, probably a 457 ERA. Solid number three, number four pitcher. Exactly. Like, he's not your ace. No. And he never was your ace. He had two incredible seasons with the Mets. and So, I don't know. Like, in, in not R.A. Dickey specifically, but I just don't think a pitcher like that should be a closer. But I think he's got that same mentality as like the Martin Brodeur situation with the Devils, where it's just like, I'm a starter, blah, 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 blah. This is what I am. This is yeah. what I, you know, if I'm not this, then fuck this and fuck the world. Let's burn this place down. <laughs> you know, I think that's the problem. Yeah. But do his, would his numbers be able to have him to be like, you know, Ben made some interesting points. You know, the point of the closer is to confuse a pitcher, but... What what do we think? Like, if you stuck just statistically speaking and take the mentality out of it, if you stuck Ari Dickey in the closing role, mm -hmm. how would he do? He can give up five home runs in one inning. Like, I don't, I don't think it really matters. <laughs> like, he'll go out, he'll go out in the first inning and and fuck the entire game over for the Jays. So I don't know. I really think it's a non-factor. He's he a he's a up... liability. He's a liability on any in any position of pitching. So he does three walks a game, average. Mm -hmm. He averages one home run over nine innings, so one home run a game. That is a lot lower than I thought. That's this year. Last year he did it was one point four. Uh, but the two years before with the Mets, the numbers got a lot better. Again, he's in a pitcher friendly park with the Mets. Yeah, exactly. Um, batting average over balls and play is two point sixty. That's okay. So those numbers are better this year. Yeah, I don't know. I just. 
Hmm? Are they playing with, at the Mets or away today? Yes, playing in. New yeah, York. they're in New York, and then they'll come back and play another two games. Uh, well, R.A. Dickey has two saves in his career. Was it illustrious Texas? career? In 2003, he had a save with the Rangers. Yeah. And in 2004, he had a save with the Rangers. Oh, both with the Rangers. And a point five, if you count, he had one save with the Rangers AAA affiliate. Ah. So he has... He's closed games before. Closed before. I, do, I remember um, when Casey, my Casey, future Hall of Famer Casey Jansen, who's losing his hair and is kind of dead to me now. And uh, because he's kind of weird. Well, we talk about that. His fastball and his hairline coincides together. We did. Did we talk about that on the podcast? Because that was a hilarious statistic that you kind of threw out there. It was in a text form I think we were talking about because I texted you that he was pitching when I was watching the Nationals play the, the Jays. Oh, yeah. So the speed of Casey Jensen's uh, fastball has declined at almost the exact same rate as his hair. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. And let me crunch the numbers on this this week. So he's gotten much less attractive, but once he, ke- he can keep his hat on, everyone looks the same, right? <laughs> Gentleman with the hat on in the podcast. Yeah. Um, so, like, Casey started as a starter mm-hmm. and then got hurt and they made him the closer and then he became the setup guy and he was good. Mm-hmm. So, I don't, I just don't know if a knuckleballer is ever going to be a good closer, but that's because, like, no one's ever tried it, I don't think, really. I think if the season. Knuckle, you need, like, you need someone like the hell. Game. Sorry. Close games. I, I think it, I think it would be interesting to see it happen. Right. I don't think it will happen. It's like in that game where you're down like twelve one. You're like, fuck it, let's throw in the third baseman to, to pitch for us. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> what the hell? Why not? <laughs> I think it would be yeah. interesting to see. So I'd like to. I'll re-challenge Ben, I guess, <laughs> okay. to show me some statistics. All right. On on R. I want R. A. Dickey when he comes in. I want his first inning. And I'll, I'll do it, too, just in case he doesn't. His yeah. first yeah. inning statistics, if we can get those. All right. Because that's essentially what it would be. But I, I know it's a different mentality, but yeah. we can't do some sort of Mythbusters control test on this. <laughs> so we're going to have to do, like, what is a one-inning R.A. Dickey? Send it in to Mythbusters. See if they can do something. Uh, could R.A. Dickey be a closer? A myth or confirmed? Yeah. But interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like that, but I, I just, I still think, as I said, the day, the day, the, the closer, I think is over. Or a designated closer. A, yeah, a designated closer. But whatever, that's fine. <laughs> whatever, man. Is it so, is it still one nothing? I'm just gonna. Who's it one nothing for? Uh, Blue Jays, right? Oh, the Blue Jays. Okay. I think it meant the hockey game. No. Oh no. So the honk I heard, I think must've been the start of the game. Yeah, because uh, yeah, there is no there score. is no score currently. Yeah. In the- I'm hearing a lot of shenanigans happening though. Probably shenanigans, evil shenanigans. I watched that this weekend, again. Nice. That is also on Netflix now. It is on Netflix. Shenanigans. What Super yeah, Troopers? Ah, yeah. evil <laughs> shenanigans. Because we got our jerseys, Gabe. I didn't. Uh, I also didn't go to the game last week. Nice. Gabe and I are uh, so amateur sporting hour. Gabe and I are in Team Ramrod. Yeah. Uh, I am still horrifically injured because, hey, guys, just for future pro tip, um, Wonderland is a terrible place if you have a back injury. And pregnant. <laughs> Roller coasters are not designed for... Uh, I'm not pregnant. Awkward. Yeah, so, like, I, I was trying to... So, we each... The thing when we went to Wonderland is we each got one veto, is what we said. We were going to try and go on every ride. And I wasted my veto on Leviathan because I'm a pussy and I was scared. Leviathan isn't that bad. I I know. So I, I know I know it's fine. It's when I like I got up there and I saw the car and I was like, it's just a fucking lap bar. I was like, I'm out. Bye guys. And my friend looked at me when we got to the top of the line and saw me like shaking. I was like, you know, you don't have to do this, right? It was like, Kate, hey, Vito, bye, I'll take your bag. I'll meet you guys down there. Okay, bye. I just booked it. I remember the uh, first came out. I went on that ride like six six consecutive times. I was pretty nauseous on the sixth ride. I, I still haven't been on it. Oh, I haven't been to Wonderland since that ride was opened. Okay. Well, then I tried to argue when we were waiting in line because I've also never been on Drop Zone because I've been scared of it because a little girl got her feet cut off. And so we lined up for Drop Actually, Zone in the States. 
Oh. Like it's, both feet sliced off. She got one back. Oh. But That's then all you need. Right away? She, really she, all has, you need. she now you only one has foot. one foot. And yeah. and so we we lined up and I tried to get out of it because it said like don't go on this if you have a back injury. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no, it hurts. And then they called me a pussy, and so I went on the run. <laughs> and now I've hurt myself a lot more. <laughs> Anyways, that's uh, so amateur sporting hour. I missed our baseball game, and Gabe also missed our baseball game, but we are Team Ramrods. Woo. And, and, and what are your names on the teams? Uh, Gabe, what did you get on the back of your jersey? Enhance. Nice. Uh, I got powdered sugar. Nice. Excellent. <laughs> Some good stuff right there. Yeah. yeah. Someone on the team's already shenanigans. Oh. Shenanigans. Which would have been perfect. <laughs> is, is, is some... Say shenanigans one more time. Hey, Farva, what's that, uh, what's that, that place uh, down the road that serves the things? Oh, no, shenanigans? Shenanigans? Look at me shenanigans. <laughs> Talk so, about shenanigans. Is anybody evil shenanigans? No. Because that okay. was hilarious. Although I, <laughs> this, I don't know if it's on this podcast, but there is a bar in Hamilton on Queenston called Shenanigans. Yeah. We have to go. Yeah. It's a <laughs> it's a Scott's sporting outing. We're going. Yeah. Go to the Shenanigans bar in Hamilton. Evil <laughs> Shenanigans. We really should. Gabe and I, let's hit up Shenanigans. Like, let's go to Hamilton. Let's get hit up the hammer. Shenanigans. Hit up the hammer. Because Mark wasn't on last week when I talked about being in Hamilton. Ugh. Yucky, yucky. Right, and every, everyone to Don Cherry's? Yeah, I guess with the Don Cherry's that we said, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you, so you weren't on the podcast, but I think you had to call Tyler out on a butt fumble, right? Did I call him out on a butt fumble? I don't know. We haven't I think he, so long. I don't know what the hell's going on. I think he contradicted himself in voting for butt basketball. Fumble, Chicago, or sorry, the Cleveland and um, Golden State thing, because you had Golden State, and then on the podcast, you felt like you needed to switch to Cleveland. Hmm. Just hedging. Like LeBron, She's hedging. Just like disgusting. Yeah. She's hedging. You fair weather fan, you. What? I think regardless. Tyler. I, oh. I think regardless whether Cleveland wins or not, LeBron is going to be the Finals MVP. Did Did you not see what he said yesterday too? No. Like, oh, like, how are you feeling? He's like, I'm confident because I'm the best in the world, and that's oh, yes. how he ended his press yeah. conference. Because <laughs> he is that. He guy. is. Yeah. He literally- He's like, you know. We go to game seven. I'm really confident because I'm the best in the world. It's like, God damn, mic drop. <laughs> well, I was listening to uh, the the other podcasts that I think were like second to in terms of awesomeness, which is the Jay and Dan podcast. Mm-hmm. And they were talking with, um, oh, God, who is the Bulls guy? Who is the ginger? Who is the white mamba? Like Barber or something. Anyways, I'll get it. Uh, and they were talking about like, so when Michael Jordan was being Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. everyone was like, behind Jordan and no one like everyone was rooting for him but I feel LeBron has like is it just our jaded I think it's because it's, we cheer for the underdog but like why do people hate LeBron it's because Jealousy. it's because of his cockiness it's the cockiness it's the cockiness that's it's the not one not two not four not five not six seven did Jordan not have that though like Jordan was is it just because of the social media era like Jordan was a yeah. cocky motherfucker Jordan wasn't a cocky motherfucker at all no he showed his. He showed how good he was on the court. Yeah. He did not need to mouth off. No. Is it is it media different or they're different? No, it's it's the generation of players. Like look at Kobe Bryant. Same thing. Just yeah. a cocky motherfucker. I hate his guts. Yes. Oh, remember when he raped a girl? Yeah. He, he is the biggest dick of all time. Mm-hmm. But he's a great basketball player. Yeah. But he's a cock. Mm-hmm. So is LeBron. He's a jackass. He is a fucking fantastic basketball player. He's less douchey than Kobe Bryant. Yeah, oh yeah. less douchey. At least LeBron gives props to his teammates, whereas hmm. Kobe just complained about his teammates. I don't find LeBron douchey. I find him just confident, but maybe that's douchey, I guess. Well, well no, yeah. It's, Kobe was douchey, and yeah. LeBron's not. Like he's like LeBron is cocky, like, and with with the right to be cocky, like he is he the is, best player. He is the best player playing, yeah. like. There's no doubt about it. He is amazing at basketball. But I don't know. I think what really killed it for him was when he had that one hour special when he was making a decision yeah, on <laughs> going to Miami. Right? I think that's what really could put a better taste in a lot of people's mouths. The, the reveal with Chris Bosch and Dwayne Wade, yeah. you know, the not the you know, four champions on five, we're gonna go six, seven, eight, and we're just, gonna we're gonna win them all, motherfucker. Yeah. And they, but he's made five NBA finals. Dude, but he made some, yeah, he's made five straight NBA finals now. Ah, I'm aware. <laughs> 
I think they they would have stood a better chance if they kept Wiggins. And, and that's uh, not the same. or how about yeah. if Love and Irving doesn't get hurt? Oh yeah, if, right? if yeah. I don't know. Keep Irving. Get, who cares about Love? But I think if they didn't trade for Love, they'd be in a better position now than uh, with, without them. In regards to being able to win, chance to leave Minnesota after three years and sign with Toronto. That's all I'm saying. He's not gonna Wiggins. Stay. Yeah. No. No. Once he's yeah, he do done, I'm sure he'll want to sign in Toronto. I don't know if Chris is listening, but you should do like a double dance side bet of <laughs> Stamkos. Who's going to be first in Toronto, Stamkos or Wiggins? Well, Wiggins has to wait three years, right? So okay, after after their current contract is up. Yes. That time frame. Yes. Who will land in Toronto first? Well, by default, because Stan Close contract. We just go by days from when their contract's done to when they re sign? Yes. Okay. The amount of, like, contract over in whatever, like, for whoever. I think they're both going to be instantaneous signs. No, wow. I think I, it's, it's yep. does, yeah. does anyone notice the feed flicking on and off? Is that Chris being like, fuck you guys? <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, it's just drunk. Drunk. He's like in the back. Maybe it's just my schedule. So as we started talking about this, the, the stream on my end started turning on and off. I think he's just like on the floor laughing. But... It's like him flicking the light switch on and off. <laughs> <laughs> is it really doing that? No. Yeah, it, it is on my end. I don't think it is for the guys. <laughs> okay. Really. So first of all, I just want to chime in. I know I'm not on camera, and I apologize. Mark but is fucking crazy. Yes, I'm, I'm, Mark is fucking crazy. Neither one of those things is going to happen. But I will say the more likely of the two is Wiggins. Yeah. But neither one is happening. Why? And that's is all I'm gonna say. Likely. All right. No, cut. No, you have to come back. That'd fucking down, mic right? drop. You can't mic drop that. I can it's mic weird. drop. <laughs> It's like this voice is coming from out of the sky. It's like it Jesus is. talking to yeah. us. It's, it's fucking like, based, on em- based on emotions, and I know I just insulted that with our R.A. Dickey talk, but like based on emotions, I think Stamkos is more of the hometown boy. Okay, so. Oh, on, uh, from, like, go, like, go to it. Like, who, as soon as their contract is over, who, like, how, who's going to sign first? Like. So, okay, can I say, I, I, I have something to say with a caveat. Sure. So I say Stamkos to the Leafs with the caveat of they make the playoffs this year. So if they make the playoffs this year, Stamkos is signing with the Leafs. Right. Okay. Here's my other caveat with the Wiggins thing. Because the NBA allows you to talk to free agents a week before free agency opens. And sometimes they come to oral agreements. Right? Uh, so do I. <laughs> That's a drink. <laughs> Oh no, what happened? Yeah, the Straight camera's out. weird. Focus right on right my on boobs. <laughs> is it better now? It's better now, okay. There we go. It's fixed. Hold it's on. fixed. Oh, there better it is. now? No, not oh, fixed. Mind. Still not fixed. Oh, it's not. I don't know what happened. No, it was. I just lifted my boobs up again. But yeah, so. <laughs> Guys, internet traffic. I'm getting it for us. That's you by Pornhub.com. We haven't said that in a long time, actually. No, I need to do hits or tits. I haven't seen Rain forever. He's been moving. Moving? Like going to Japan. Yeah, he used to live like a block away from me and now he lives like in Japan. <laughs> well, pretty much. He lives at St. Clair and Dufferin, which is like, fuck you, I have to take a streetcar. What's his exa- exact address for all our viewers? <laughs> something something Oakwood. <laughs> yeah. It's a big Neanderthal walking around that area. Yeah. That's that's Ray. Yeah, I'll send you guys the laundromat he has to go to a lot. There you go. Anyways, Chris, did you have a, a reason why Mark is an idiot? Or Mark, did you have a reason why Chris is an idiot? Oh, we, I don't think I need a reason to say why Mark's no, an idiot. Just, it's just Mark. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So Who's mean. Who's bigger idiot? Well, definitely Mark. Oh. I mean, I, I think yeah. I'm physically bigger, but that's only because I eat more <laughs> cheeseburgers. <laughs> yeah, it's just because I eat more cheeseburgers. Well, I got I, I right now have in front of me... Um, Deep fried mushrooms. Well, where's uh, my so deep fried mushroom? I was gonna say I think Mark eats fairly poorly. Yeah, yeah. I do. I also have these uh, jalapeno popcorn shrimp. I have wings down there. Gravy. It's all deep fried. And this it is? Jesus. This Where did you get brought this? to you by the Food Network. Or whoever Mark's cardiac doctor is. <laughs> yeah. Doctor Lovrix actually was the surgeon who removed my gallbladder. Oh, good. Well, well I hope he's not, listening. He's also uh, not a cardiologist. <laughs> Aren't you not supposed to eat fatty foods like that when you have your gallbladder removed? I did. 
and I may get some heartburn issues, but I haven't had anything. It's just a suggestion. Yeah. 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 It's clearly like... a suggestion. Yeah. If That's I-, I got um so I fucked up my back like four years ago or something and I got medication for it and it was like oh you can't drink with this and I said to the pharmacist I was like so like what kind of I can't drink with this like if I dr- will it like shut down my liver I can't drink with this will it make me just a little bit more dizzy can't drink with this and she's like well it's just because drinking's hard on your stomach and this medication's a little bit hard on your stomach. I was like, okay, never mind. I'm going to be drinking with this then. <laughs> like, there's variations with that. So it depends on what your gallbladder guy said. Yeah. He said, you don't really have to change your diet. Just uh, avoid uh, high fatty foods. No, don't eat them constantly. I mean, I haven't had this stuff in a long time. So I, I was watching yes, the subway okay. and I saw the fish and chips beside the place. I was like, ah, I'm going to go fish and chips. But I don't get fish or chips. I just got... Mushroom you got everything else. Yeah, everything else but the fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you deep fry, sir? Yeah. Are, are we done sports for the evening? Because we have another podcast to get done. Oh, do we? Oh, that's right. Yeah. No, I feel like we are. Because um, next week when we touch base, all of the series will be over. So we can analyze who is right and who is wrong. And oh. m- hopefully Mark and I will both be some monies richer. Yeah. I wish the best for both of us, pal. As I do. As you I hope both of us are in the top eight. What if both of us are in the top eight? I don't care where we end up. I just hope both of us get there. Agreed. Although you'll probably like it more if you're on top. I usually do. Womp womp. <laughs> we should cut it there. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Thanks for listening, everyone, and uh, we'll see you next week. Burton buns. Bye. <laughs>